came out of an abusive relationship immediately after that i went straight into another relationship what's going on here like you know i understand you're in a relationship and you're in love but a man shouldn't stop you from going to church your life is basically about god you have a calling upon you how can you all of a sudden just distance yourself from god so in that relationship i, I was literally far away from god like i remember there was even times where i'll be like god even if it's like the very last minute even if it was a time where i'm walking down the aisle it's a big thing yeah it's i was like thing. if he's not the one not for easy. me take him away from me i don't even remember what dating <laughs> like what you know talking to a guy is anymore i don't know yeah, how to do yeah, it because yeah. i've been in a relationship yeah. for seven years you haven't been in a game listen <laughs> but it was in that moment that i was so hungry for god so babe tell us where were you we were studying music together as we were planning to tour things were getting shaky in our relationship yeah. and all of a sudden she told me she wanted to end it and i was like what she actually told me let's fix it in february it was like november december i was like how can you pause a relationship for three months <laughs> i must admit that at this time of my life i wasn't on the right place with god and i remember lying on that mattress just saying god this is the time i'm giving you back the control because obviously i don't know how to do this <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Serge. My channel is about motivating people becoming the best version of themselves. So please subscribe, like, share, and all that good stuff. Today I have a visitor. Oh my! Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you feeling? Really nervous. But don't be. You're gonna be fine. Okay. I know I did a, like a vlog for his birthday and I said introducing Bay, but it was just a vlog. So I decided to actually formally introduce Bay to the channel. So this is my partner. This is my love. His name is Mess, but it's spelled M-A-D-S. So English people will say Mads. Mads, yeah, they think I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad all day long. <laughs> It's, sorry, I'm, I'm from Denmark, yes? Man so in plural, yeah? Yeah, man, yeah, man in plural. <laughs> oh, His nice. name is Mess. Yes. Welcome, Mess. Thank you. So today we're coming with how we met. Well, it's gonna it's gonna get interesting in a bit. But don't say I don't listen to you because some of you have asked me to share how we met and all that stuff, and I was like, you know what? We've got time. He's here. Why not just put the camera on and let you guys in? But before we actually give you the full juice of how we met, we actually talked about it. It's a good idea for us to talk about what we were actually doing separately before we met because we're not here because we want to, you know, show guys that we're perfect. Like, that's not what we no, want to yeah. do. Yeah, just to share the background and yeah. show where we came from. Yeah, so we thought it would be a yeah. good idea to share all that stuff with you. I came out of an abusive relationship and immediately after that i went straight into another relationship which for me is like the biggest biggest mistake that anyone can make because once you come out of an abusive relationship you are down you're not yourself you're insecure um you're just you're just not in a good frame of mind to make a decision I basically came out of that abusive relationship and then I went straight into a new relationship. Now, that relationship lasted seven years. It was a great relationship, don't get me wrong. I was with an amazing guy. He was so good to me. But the truth is, I I didn't take time to heal before going into that relationship. And I remember, like, my ex fiance used to actually, yes, I was engaged before. If you've not watched that video, I'm going to put a link here up here somewhere so you can go and watch that video as well so you have an understanding of what i'm saying even though i was in a relationship for seven years and i was engaged the fact that you know i just came out of a relationship straight away into one i remember my ex used to like help me even get over my ex you know it was like a proper fresh breakup so i didn't take time at all to heal from that relationship and then 
I entered another relationship, which was a good relationship. I, I grew, you know, I learned a lot of things in that relationship, but at the same time, I did not pray. And while I was in my relationship with my ex fiance, I never prayed about it. I came out of the relationship and then there was, you know, someone that was there for me, that was caring for me, that was advising me. We fell in love and I started that relationship. Now, further down um, in the relationship with my ex fiance, I realized that I didn't pray for my future partner. But that was also because in my abusive relationship, I was really far from God. I felt far from God. I remember that you know, my ex never used, not my ex-fiance, but the one before my ex-fiance, he, he was very abusive, very controlling. He never used to allow me to go to church. Like, literally, I remember my mom really stepping in and my mom was basically like, what's going on here? Like, you know, I understand you're in a relationship and you're in love, but a man shouldn't stop you from going to church. I would give my mom all sorts of excuses mm. just so that I don't go to church. I'm like, you know what? This is all the people's stuff. And, you know, younger people is different. You have to make sure that you make time for your man. Yeah. And, you know, if I go to church in the morning and then my mom is like, let's go to the evening service. I'll be like, no, I have to spend, you know, my Sunday evening with my man or else it's going to get angry. And I remember, <laughs> yeah, I remember literally like, when I got to church, if church finishes at 1 o'clock, 12.59, mm -hmm. my ex would be outside waiting for me. And that was like the yeah. habit. Like every Sunday, I couldn't go to any church. I couldn't do nothing. Anyways, that was like, yeah, that's another story. Mm -hmm. But I remember my mom literally just being like, no. And she just started praying, praying, praying. And I strongly believe it's because of her that I eventually came out of that relationship because she was praying to God and she was just like, this is not who you are. You were born a Christian. Your life is basically about God. You have a calling upon you. How can you all of a sudden just distance yourself from God? So in that relationship, I, I was literally far away from God. So when I met my ex-fiance, um, I was healing in a relationship, which is something that I should have done before getting myself into a new relationship anyway, um, I was healing and then further down, I just realized that, okay, I didn't actually pray for this relationship. I need to, to start praying. And I basically just made the decision to start praying and asking God, like, you know, to take him away if he wasn't the one. And if he was the one, then, you know, help us grow. And honestly, guys, I'm going to advise you as well. If you're in a relationship with somebody right now and you're not sure that that person is the one for you and you didn't pray, it's not too late. Literally, you can start praying now and asking God to take that person away if that person isn't for you. I start praying that prayer maybe like three years into the relationship and I would just say God if he's not the one for me please take him away and then take care of me because I knew that he was such a great guy and I knew that if I was to break up with him that would hurt me but as painful as it was as uncomfortable as that prayer was I made the decision to do that and I remember praying that and even when I'll speak to my friends I'll be like yeah I'm in love I love my man and everything but if God was to say that he's not the one for me like I remember there was even times where I'll be like God even if it's like the very last minute even if it was a time where I'm walking down the aisle like wow. if he's not the one for me yeah it's a big thing yeah, yeah. I was like thing. if he's not the one not for easy. me take him away from yeah. me Seven years after we were engaged and that relationship didn't work out. And as you can imagine, seven years of your life with somebody, I'm lost after this relationship. I'm like, I don't even know what to do with myself. I don't even remember what dating, like what, you know, talking to a guy is anymore. I don't yeah, know how to do yeah. it because I've been in a relationship yeah. for seven years. You haven't been in a game. Listen, and you know, just because I said, you know, God take him away, doesn't mean that it wasn't going to hurt. Like that no. breakup, uh, like pepper to me that sounds like a very very brave thing yeah it didn't sound easy yeah. and because you you've obviously i've heard the story before but yeah. i'm the first thing i'm thinking wow like yeah. i'm just impressed like yeah. because this is a very bold move yeah. basically what it is you're asking god you're asking god to to take your best friend or whatever like your closest person yeah. your spouse away if it's not pleasing to god yeah so that is another level of obedience yeah. i'm just saying so yeah. yeah but i think it's because i realized my like my you're purpose yeah, and my calling, calling yeah, yeah. So when you know the depth of it and the, yes okay yes yeah. when you know your calling when you know what god has called you for then if you know your life is about god yeah. then you don't want to make your own decision and you don't about, wanna... it's not about yourself exactly it's, like, it's about god's will mm, definitely mm. that's basically um where i was i was so heartbroken i was yeah i i yeah i don't know it was it was it was tough mm. it was really hard but it was in that moment that I was so hungry for God. I was like, God, I want nothing but to please you. Like, I want nothing 
for your will to be done in my life. I don't want to date anybody. I don't even want any guy to look at me and think I'm hot. Like, the only person I want to see, the only, not even the only person, the only guy that I want to be able to see physically mm -hmm. is the person that you have. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of being in, in relationship. I'm tired of men treating me like I'm nothing. I'm tired of just being in a relationship yeah. because I'm falling in love with somebody. And then, no, I don't want that anymore. Now, I mm -hmm. want, first of all, I was like, I want to serve you. I want to do your will. I want to please you. I don't want to just, you know, live my life anyhow anymore. And then when it comes to relationship, I want you to send that person that you have created for me. Please close my eyes. Make me blind. I don't want to see any guy. And I don't want any guy to see me. I don't want to. I just want to. be a ghost. <laughs> I just, around the street, but yeah, yeah just sorry. I just want the person that you have created for me. But I was desperate. Mm, I was yeah, hungry. Yeah. I was hurt. I was honestly, it was an honest prayer, like a yeah, deep, no, I can feel it. Yeah, a feel it deep story. prayer. Another thing I was tired of, honestly, even before getting to that place of desperation, it was just the fact that I kept dating guys in the same pattern. So I would just mm. meet a guy, fall in love, and start dating. Meet a guy, fall in love, and start dating. I never prayed. Yeah. And you can't get a different result if you're doing things the same way. So something had to change. Something had to change. And yeah. for me, I had to now start to pray for my future partner. Because this is something I've never done before. I decided that this time around, I was going to do things differently. I was going to involve God from the very, very, very beginning. And it was almost like, for me, I felt like it was almost like a covenant that I was making with God. I was yeah, like, yeah. if if he's not the one for you, please, I don't want to see any guy. It was a deal deal breaker yeah. kind of thing. Make me blind, basically. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to see, I don't want to see him. Yeah. I don't want him to see me. I don't want any guy to come to me and tell me you're looking hot. I don't want any eye candy coming my way. I don't want anybody that is my type. Like, I, just, I was just like, God make me blind i basically don't want to see anything so that's basically the background of where i was so before meeting this one just to conclude i was desperate and hungry for god and just like the bible says seek first the kingdom of god and every other thing will be added onto you i got to a place where i was seeking god i wanted to serve him i wanted him to direct me i was hungry for him i was cornered the only person that could get me out of that predicament basically was god so babe Tell us, where were you? Tell where was I? Yeah, where were you? So, if we go like a decade back... <laughs> Why are we going a decade? decade? Oh, yeah, that's, that makes me sound low, no, very because, old. Yeah, that makes me sound very I was in a relationship and... Was it a serious one? It was, it was a very serious relationship. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, I was in an alright place with God. Okay, I was kind of lukewarm, but I was still trying to be aware of what he, he wanted for my life. She was a singer and um, we were studying music together. So eventually, during my studies, I went to Africa to study some, some African music. Where and... exactly? Africa is not a country. Right. <laughs> I know, it's a continent. Yeah, you can go to Asia, you can go to Europe. Yeah. Okay, so okay. you went to Mali. No, I went to Mali in yeah. West Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I went there with some of my friends from, the, from the school. Obviously, I spoke to my ex about it. She was cool with it. And we formed the band and we were touring in the band. So the, the, the stay was kind of extended. Mm -hmm. And to make a long story short, the following year, we were organizing with our band to go back and to tour there. So I was basically going back for the second time. And when I went, it was for a couple of months because we were trying to establish something. As we were planning to tour, things were getting shaky in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she told me she wanted to end it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? But, you know, <laughs> God has blessed it. It's like, you know... <laughs> You're the one I still wanted to nourish that relationship and to to stay fight with her to it. fight for it. So what it's happened? Because you love hard, isn't it? When you love, you love. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm a, I'm I love hard. Yeah, yeah, love hard, fall hard. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically so, a fighter. Yeah, I'm a, fi great. I'm a fighter. Yeah. I actually rushed on a plane from Mali to Denmark, where we both of us are from, and I wanted to see her. She didn't know because she actually told me, I don't want you to come. I'm very busy with exams. I'm busy with school. I don't have time to fix it. Let's fix it in February. It was like November, December. I was like, how can you pause a relationship in three months? <laughs> anyway, that's my story. Yeah? How can you pause a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and we were trying to work it out. It didn't really work. And I went back to Mali because I knew she was going to go anyway. Mm -hmm. At that point, I felt like I knew deep down in my heart I must admit that at this time of my life, I wasn't on the right place with God. I was not seeking God daily and I wasn't putting him first. 
So I came back to Mali. I was in my room and I was just thinking, okay, I know deep down in my heart, God has something better for me because if he takes something away, he will only give you better back. Amen. And I just realized how much I've actually distanced myself from God. Mm -hmm. And I remember lying on that mattress just saying, God, this is the time. I'm giving you back the control because obviously <laughs> I don't know how to do this. <laughs> yeah. So I was shaking. I was crying. I was it, it desperate. Like, but I just felt like I told God, you know what? I'm here in Mali. <laughs> Maybe I should have been in Denmark, whatever. Maybe I should have been oh, there, that's here true, and there. Because your family was in Denmark. Yeah. You were pretty much there with your, well, with your friends. I was with my friends. Anyway, so, and they were not Christians, actually. It was not really a, a like a prayer, prayerful environment. Anyway, at that point, I didn't care. I just told my friends, you know what, when we have rehearsal tomorrow, I can't, I can't rehearse till 12 because I need a time with God. I was straight up. I was just like... And you they, were so desperate they and knew, hungry but, for him. Yeah, and they knew me and they knew where I came from. They also knew my ex-girlfriend. So they mm -hmm. respected that. I was lying on that mattress telling God, now, this is a time where you take the wheel. This is a time where I gave you the mandate to decide where I'm going in my life because I'm tired and I, I'm hurt. Exhausted. I'm heartbroken, exhausted. I was saying, if you want me to go to Bible school, if you want me to go to any kind of, just send me to the church, send me where you want me, mm -hmm. so I can walk with you and I can walk the path that you have created for me. Mm -hmm. And without me realizing, that was the turning point in my life. Mm -hmm. After that, I was seeking God every day. Every time the pain was too much to carry, I said, God, take my pain. I can't carry it. Mm. I, I basically threw, threw it on the cross. Yeah. So God really helped you. God really the helped process. me throughout. He even helped me going through this process way quicker than, than, than you would normally expect because I actually realized that it only took me a couple of months before I actually felt renewed. So I went back to Denmark. I found a place to live. And I just remembered an invitation I got from the African church which was very interesting for me because I was very attracted to the African music, African culture. And I just went there. African culture, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like that. So I just went there and I, I checked it out. Sometime later. Yeah, I think a year later or something like that. I met this sweet one right here. So yeah, that's basically my story. Yeah. I mean, so guys, we met at that particular church and stay tuned to now know how we met because that's gonna be the best part it's gonna be part two of this video just to conclude it was basically very interesting to just see how i was living my life all the way in london so desperate for god wanting god to use me wanting to serve god and then saying god i like just take the will i just want to do your will and where he was all the way in africa in mali before going back to denmark he also got a place where he was basically saying god i am desperate for you mm. take the will i don't yeah. want to have control over my life anymore and from this you can just see that for you to be able to have a healthy relationship you need to include god you need to pray about it and you need to trust god to lead you and another lesson this is actually the biggest lesson is that when the bible says seek first the kingdom of god and every other stuff will be given unto you that's basically it yeah. don't waste your time going to clubs going to you know to find environments whereby you you know you will see a lot of single people seek first the kingdom of god and i like i promise you god will shock you stay tuned for part two which is coming up very soon to know exactly how we met and how we got together on that note we're gonna sign out for now please don't forget to subscribe like and share don't forget to subscribe like and share and follow me on my social media platform as well so we can keep in contact and talk a bit more you know we can't really talk a lot here on youtube so Follow me on my Insta, on my Snapchat. And also comment below if you have any question, if you have any suggestion, or if you have any nice thing to say, you know. Um, just comment down so that we can also keep in contact that way. We're going to sign up for now. God bless you and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Ooh, okay.